Hello Champions and Future Champions, Hello Chessmod Family, GM Gabuzian is here with you and we are starting our daily lesson. We had a lot of middle game coverage, interesting positions and so on. And now we are going to pay attention to the end games. You may ask why doesn't sound boring end game may be less attractive than the middle game? First of all, not at all, you will see many interesting, exciting positions and ideas in the endgames. Secondly, it is very, very important to have a good understanding and knowledge of endgames as well, because very often you may gain a big advantage right out of the middle game, but in the endgame your skills will not be enough to convert it. So, for this reason, paying attention to the endgames is equally important. In this set of positions, we are going to be covering Rook versus the Pawn. Different scenarios when the Rook is trying to beat the Pawn and when the Pawn is stronger. Today's class is going to be dedicated to the strong Pawn and we will see different scenarios when Pawn is able to beat the Rook. Position you are seeing right now is from a very famous study. It's why to move. We are having a single Pawn versus a very huge and strong Rook. If we now slow down, like we'll go rook d8, rook c8 and we'll just stop the pawn, so it will be a draw. For this reason, we have to play with white the c7 move. And let's now take a look at this position. Like rook, in order to stop the c8 promotion, cannot go to d8 and cannot go to c5. Both squares are covered. So, the only logical reply will be to give a check to white king. Now let's understand the options of white king as well. If you try to play king c5, which seems to be a very logical move because we are attacking the rook and trying to promote the pawn, black will just go rook d1 and after c8 will have this rook c1 check, so it won't work for white. After rook d4 check, if we are now playing king a5, black will just go rook c4 and easily stop the pawn. Let's take a look at more logical continuation, like king b5. With this move, white is keeping an eye on c4 square and as well don't keeping the king on the c-file. So, how to stop the pawn? Only logical way is to give another check for black, which is a rook d5 check. Now it's the same, king c6 will be rook d1, king a6 will be rook c5. So, king b6 is the only logical move. But after rook d6 check, white doesn't have a way to improve this position. If white is going king to b7, black will just go rook to d7, pinning the pawn and making a draw. So, for this reason, at the beginning, after rook d4 check, going to the upper side with the king is not working. Let's now decide if we can go to the lower ranks. If we go king to a3, same rook c4 will happen. What about if we go king to b3? And here is the trick, guys. The thing is that after rook d3 check, now we're able to go to c file, and the problem for black is, there is no way for the rook to give checks to this king, king in the lower ranks, and there is no space for the rook. So, for this reason, white is going to promote. But if you remember, I promised you, endgames are going to be exciting as well. So, it's not over yet. Black is going rook to d4, and suddenly, if you promote c8 queen, rook c4 check is making a draw, because after takes, it's a Tillmate, all the squares are covered around the black king. For this reason, after rook d4, we're playing c8 rook. You may say, and what's the trick? Rook versus the rook in an endgame, it might be a very simple draw. And it's correct, but this is a super exception. Right now, white is threatening rook a8 checkmate. Black cannot move the king to a2, because the same checkmate will happen. This king cannot be bothered because all the squares are taken. And for this reason, black has to play rook to a4, trying to cover the a5. And seems it's safe now, but again, there is another king b3 move now. The rook is under attack and there is rook c1 checkmate threat. So white is winning in a very beautiful way. Let me now change this position guys and I will show you a few more interesting examples in this topic. So now we're having another topic in this position. Right now white is having two pawns. 
but I'm sure if you pay attention to this position, you will instantly figure out that after f6, if black is taking rook g6, f7, it's gonna be the same position. So black will be giving a check, king e4, rook g4 check, king e3, rook g3, and after king f2, this time white is just promoting because there are no stillmate ideas. There is a trick this time, guys. The first f6 move is a big blunder, actually. And Blake is easily making a draw. In this position, there is a very typical rook g5 check. Now, if white is going king to e6, Blake is just able to take. It will be a pin, so Blake is making a draw. Or if white is going king to e4, Blake can take rook g6, and it's again a draw. f7 will be losing for white because of rook f6. And if we just go king f5, black will take the pawn and make a draw. So, at the beginning, we are not allowed to play this f6 move. We should be careful in these situations. But, luckily, in this position, white is having a winning option. We can now go king f6. Now we want to play g7, king f7, g8. But, if black is going king b6, trying to bring the king, it's not gonna be working. The trick is that after g7, king c5, king f7, king d5, black is going after this pawn with a king and will be giving away rook for the g pawn, like in the variation, g8 queen, takes, takes and king e5, so this is a draw. For this reason, after king b6, we are going king to g7. What is the trick, guys? That our pawn is on the f file and black will have to spend a time with this rook going to here, so we will be winning a tempo now. After king c6, f6, king d7, f7. If the black rook was on f1, black would have king e7 move. But now it's not possible because we will be promoting. As well, we promote if black is just playing rook f1, we promote a queen and we are winning with this g pawn. So, once again, at the beginning we should be careful with these moves because this is a very typical check for these positions. Let's now go ahead and watch another example in this topic. It's white to move again, again pawn versus the rook, but this time rook is located far from white king. It means it can be giving many many checks and we will not be able to run away with our king and block the c file as well. So let's take a look. After c7, black is giving us a check. Usually we were trying to cover on the lower ranks, but if we now go king c1, rook f1 check, king d2, rook f2 check, and once we try to attack the rook with king e3, the c file will be open for the rook, so rook c2 will be even winning for black. For this reason, after rook f2 check, we have to go king b3, trying just get closer to our pawn. Rook f3 check king b4, rook f4 king b5, rook f5 king b6. And suddenly, after rook f6 check, we're having king b7. In this position, black king is located on the worst possible spot for black, and for this reason we're winning. This is a little bit exceptional example, but in some scenarios when king is on the way of the rook, we can be covering behind the pawn. So, in this position, with c8 queen, white is gonna be winning on the next move as well. Again, another interesting idea. Let's now go ahead and get a test position. So, here is white to move. This time black has a bishop on the board as well. How to play for white is a good question for you guys. You can share your thoughts and ideas in the comments section below. GM Gabuzian was here with you. Thank you for your subscriptions, likes and sharing this video with your friends. We appreciate it a lot. See you next time during our next daily lessons.